everybody. Good afternoon. It's 12:30 on Thursday, uh, and welcome to my Facebook Live. I'm Dr. Sally Foote, a veterinarian and animal behaviorist. I have over 35 years of veterinary practice experience, along with a special interest in animal behavior. And so I focus on providing veterinary behavior consults, primarily actually through video chat because it's the best way I can see your pet in your home and help you right at that moment with what to do for your pet. I also provide uh, veterinary staff education with a lot of emphasis on decreasing fear and stress and anxiety during care for uh, in the veterinary practice as well as at home. And lastly, information for you here, uh, the pet owner and any other animal care professional. So you can find me at my website, drsallyjfoot.com with a lot of handouts resources, courses, my events, my continuing education events are all posted there. And you can also find me on YouTube. So these Facebook Lives, let me share it on my YouTube channel, Dr. Sally J. Foot. Make sure you click the subscribe button to keep up with it. Okay, today, today we're gonna talk about our cats. Our wonderful cats who get scared and they tend to hide a lot in the day. Now, a lot of cats will spend, as you, you talk to clients and they'll say, oh, well, he likes to lay under the bed during the daytime, or his favorite place to rest is gonna be like on top of the bookcase there where he can look out over the world. Oh, okay, that's great, but how long does he stay up on top of the bookcase? Oh, he may be up there all morning long, sleeping, or all morning and afternoon, and then may get down once or twice to use the litter box, but he's always right back up there. Okay, that cat is actually not going around and you know sniffing out smells they're not playing they're not exercising and the reason why while it's nice you have this high perch for them if they're spending the whole day laying up there it's really similar to somebody like laying the whole day in bed or staying in their room and not socializing with the rest of the family or going outside for a walk or doing any hobbies or anything like that so these cats are choosing, they may be up on a high perch or they're underneath the bed, or even some of these cats will burrow underneath, you know, the top layer of a comforter and be all like cozy in the comforter, sleeping for half the morning. But really what they're doing is they're hiding. They've, they're looking comfortable because they're in hiding. And the, so why are they hiding? Okay, so a lot of these cats are actually chronically anxious. There are things going on in the home which may not at all seem like a threat to us, but they are a threat to the cat. So the cat has learned to avoid, and that is like the default behavior that most of our cats really wanna do. They wanna avoid what the stimulus is, what be it noise, be it a lot of movement of people or other animals, or even being picked up, being petted, being touched a lot. So they're gonna avoid it, and they find the place to go to get away from it all and when they get away from it all, they're less anxious, right? Because it, I'm hiding, nobody can get to me here, nobody knows I'm here, they're ignoring me, this is exactly what I want. So while they're looking calm in that hiding spot, the lack of exercise, meaning even getting out to do any kind of play, they're not getting down off that perch or up off that bed to walk around much to even seek any kind of affection or seek play time or hunt for their food or you know really do anything that lack of exercise it is what leads oftentimes to a number of serious health problems in our cat so this whole situation of a cluster of these serious health problems is what's called pandora syndrome i don't know how the word pandora syndrome came up but it did come up a few years ago within the veterinary, veterinary profession to be the way of, you know, putting as this category, the environmentally, most often related to the environment, stress triggers that then cause much of this hiding and stress-related health problems. So what are some of the health problems? Number one, I just said it a little go, bit ago, is obesity, okay? Cats get overweight. They get overweight because they come down off their perch or they get up in the morning when you get up and you put their dry food out or you put their wet food out. And many people are still feeding their cats out of a bowl that sits out all day because we're told cats are grazers. And yes, cats are somewhat grazers, intermittent eaters, 
So we leave the bowl out so they can have it wherever they want. But the cat may go to, will go to the bowl and they'll eat. Now, especially if we have two cats coming to one bowl, we make a competition and one of two things will happen. Cat A is there, I'm eating a little bit. Cat B comes along. Cat A says, I'm gonna stay here eating. This is my bowl, I don't want you to get in the bowl. And he may actually move his body around a little bit to body block the bowl as he's eating. So this cat A is consuming more calories than he needs because he's now in that competitive body resource guarding of the bowl to prevent cat B from getting in there. Now, cat B may kind of sit down, may sit back and wait, and cat A says, okay, you're not gonna fight me for it. I'm playing full and now I'll leave. So cat P comes in and eats. Now, that was one competitive thing and that's a part of how we get the overeating and obesity. Now the second part is that's one place they're competing over resource. And a lot of cats are not only competing over the food bowl, but if you really watch them, they're doing also body blocking and over like one cat's gonna come up the stairs and we have the other cat laying across the top of the threshold. And it may be that it was cat A guarding the bowl, but this time it's cat B guarding, going up the stairs to get into the other rooms or really investigate around the house. So cat A who ate a lot being the food resource guarder now isn't moving around the house as much and he comes back downstairs and he goes underneath the couch, he lays under the couch or he lays on that top perch on top of the bookcase because he knows, if I were to go up past that cat on the stairs, he's gonna pounce on me, he's gonna smack me, or he chase me down the stairs. I don't want that stress, I'll just lay on top of the bookcase all day. So we have the extra calorie consumption with lack of movement or exercise, which then leads to obesity. Now, what does obesity lead to? It then leads to diabetes. And it is the type two Diabetes, meaning the chubby cat, the overweight cat, that it's overloading their pancreas and causing them that chronic low-grade inflammation that then exhausts the pancreas and the lack of insulin. So then they need to go on, you know, the insulin and they're, they're truly they're truly diabetic. But the diabetes came from the obesity, and the obesity came from the la the stress in the home and the lack of exercise. So you see how obesity leading to and diabetes are related more to the behavior and the environment of the home than just calorie intake. This is why a lot of the cats that, you know, hey, I'll say, okay, let's put them on a low calorie diet, you know, and feed only one eighth of a cup total per day or one eighth of a cup twice a day. Here's the calorie amount. And the client does this. I have some wonderful clients who really truly measure the food and make sure the cat only eats that limited calorie intake. Well, here's what happens. You cut down the calorie intake, and if we have not increased exercise and increased muscle mass, then the metabolism slows down to match that calorie drop. That's why they might lose a little weight, but they don't keep losing weight. So how do we get them up to exercise? Okay, I'm gonna talk about that, enriching the environment. But this is how come we have some of these obese cats that maybe shed 10 or 15% of their body weight and a lot of these cats, when we're seeing them obese, they're 40, 50, 60, 80, or 100% overweight. Anyway, they shed some of it, but not enough to make a difference. Um, so diabetes, what's the second thing? We can see, of course, heart disease. Oops, I just fell. I was gonna say heart disease there. Because the uh, high, higher amount of fat does surround the heart and it affects and prevents the heart from beating correctly. We are seeing an increase in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in cats. Some of it is genetic, but we do see uh, obesity related to that. Obesity also relates to feline urologic syndrome, right? Our cats who are overweight have a higher incidence of the inflammation in the urine, uh, urinary obstruction, and these are serious health problems for the cat. So that's how this uh, stress in the home you see can now start to lead to these specific problems that are going back to obesity. And the non-obese cat, we still can see FUS because the bladder and the urinary system is kind of like a target organ for stress in the cats. There is, it's called uh, feline interstitial 
feline interstitial cystitis, FIC, this is where the lining of the bladder, the blood vessels, dilate and they're right there on the surface of the inner surface of the bladder. So when there's inflammation, these blood vessels break and you get frank blood coming out of the urine. And that inflammation is very painful. It is extremely painful for the cats. These are cats who then suddenly stop using the litter box. So they may be urinating next to the litter box or in another area in the home and you're gonna see frank blood. It is a medical condition. Yet the treatment for that medical condition, yes, we will get them on anti-inflammatories. Oftentimes the, there is no bacterial infection going on there. Antibiotic may be started because the antibiotic is a strong anti-inflammatory and in the face of frank blood coming out through the uh, urinary system and the urinary tract, the bacteria that's in the lower urinary tract could ascend up on that raw irritated lining of the bladder and then be a way that infection could start. So there is some validity for the use of antibiotic. And once you get that anti-inflammatory, oftentimes the inflammation goes down, the blood goes away. But guess what? The cat relapses with FIC again, maybe a month, two months later, it comes back. So it's this vicious cycle for these cats. And the treatment for FIC, it is all, really the best treatment is all about enriching the home. Getting extra perches, playing with them a couple times a day. Yes, we will put them on the diets to help prevent stone formation and you know help with a healthier uh, urinary system because it truly is inflamed. We do need to take that step with, excuse me, I have to fix my collar. <laughs> we do need to take that step to prevent stone formation and other things. But the real root cause of this FIC is often because we may have children in the home and we don't have enough places for the cats to jump up and get away from the children. And the children are noisy, they're playing, they're running, they're kids, that's normal child behavior. But we don't have a place for the cats to get away from it and be happy. We may have other housemate cats who are body blocking the litter box. We may have an older cat where they're having some low grade chronic pain in the body and it is difficult to eliminate and then because of the, it's also difficult to get into the litter box, it may be difficult for them to get off the floor. And the floor area of your living room, your family room, the hallways and stairways, these are high traffic zones. And these high traffic zones are very competitive spots for cats to cross past each other, plus the movement of feet, the movement of people, you know, clutter on the floor for the cat is really a challenge for them to feel like, okay, I've got the space to be able to move around and nobody's gonna step on me or nobody's gonna run past me. You know, and I feel comfortable in my body being able to walk past that. All that isn't happening for the older cat unless we have enriched the home accordingly for the older cat. And as a result then, rise in cortisol, rise in norepinephrine, increase in these stress hormones, which then results in that inflammation in the bladder, the bloody urine, pain, urinating out of the box and FIC. Uh, there also is this, what's called the psychogenic alopecia in cats. Cats are over grooming, you know, on their legs, over grooming on their legs, over grooming on the abdomen. Now there's leading evidence that a lot of these cats have food allergy or inhalant allergy as the reason why they are licking at their legs, licking at their body. So it is important if you have a cat who the skin may look normal or the skin may look slightly inflamed to still have the veterinarian examine them and to do a trial with the hypoallergenic diet. Okay, but why is, why is the cat's immune system now having trouble processing or living with certain foods or certain you know, agents in the air? And suppression of the immune system happens with stress. So a lot of these cats with psychogenic alopecia, the you know, over licking, over grooming, we definitely know a lot of them have you know, stress in the household and treating that may directly reduce that over licking. We also know some have that medical problem, food allergy or pain. I had one case where the cat was licking on the abdomen and it turned out she had a kidney stone. She was licking in her abdomen where she was triggered by the pain of the kidney stone. But go back even a step further. Why do you have the kidney stone, right? What caused the inflammation in your urinary system? What caused the inflammation and, uh, sorry, the effect on your immune system that you now have food allergy? We're gonna treat it with the hypoallergenic diet. But by reducing a lot of the stress in the household, 
not only did the psychogenic alopecia reduce and the medical plan was easier to maintain we didn't need as many drugs maybe they needed the diet for just like six months or a year until the body was all resolved provided we kept up with the stress reduction plan now the, so um it i think this name was given to really suggest that we're going to see this myriad you know this variety of chronic health conditions in cats who frankly are not getting their cat needs met and um it's interesting i was excuse me i gotta turn this off my, before my battery goes out i apologize um anyway so what we see in a lot of our farm cats we don't see these problems we don't see the pandora syndrome why because we live an outside life and it's really very enriched so my rule of thumb for all of our kitties and you can go to the indoor pet initiative at osu.edu.com, a lot of resources. Go to my website, drsallyjfoot.com, and I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. Three purchase per cat in the home. You have a three cat home, we need to open up three different places your cat can easily get to per cat to get around and move around the house and not compete with each other. Each cat, the human has to play with for 10 minutes a day. Get out those busy, bo busy balls, the feather toys, the lights. Thirdly, a happy cat is a cat who thinks he killed something every day. So you're going to toss the food or let him grab his toys and tread with his back feet like he thinks he killed them. Fourth, use that feline ladder of aggression. It's based on anxiety escalating to aggression and match. Okay, he went hiding under the bed. What just happened? Did the kids wake up and they're running around the house all excited because it's Saturday morning and it's active time? Ah, high kid act child activity has cat high. Maybe we can make some perches up around the house or encourage the children to play in one certain area of the home while we then can have the cat really nice and things to entice the cat to go in another part of the home and at least move through the home. Um, and lastly, just watch your cats for this body blocking and toss food to train your cats to redirect away. Um, I hope this has helped you out a lot. This really is a pretty significant problem with our cats and their health. And um, I encourage you to talk to your veterinarian about it. Go to that Indoor Pet Initiative. Dr. Tony Buffingham has done so much wonderful work for starting off this website and writing about this Pandora Syndrome to help our cats. Thank you all, have a great weekend, and bye-bye.